Welcome back to Figure Depot. Today we're taking a look at the combatants fight for glory, Stolo, Praetorian Prefect, and Praetorian Guards. Uh, these two are the same figure, and this figure is essentially the same. His shoulder armor is a little different. He comes with a cape and uh, some slightly different accessories than the guards themselves do, but from the waist down, they're essentially the same. The arms are essentially the same. The torso is the same. It's pretty much just the heads and the uh, ornamentation on the shoulders. That's a little bit different. So we'll get a closer look at that. Uh, these figures are fantastic. Uh, they are from uh, Zesray Studios. Uh, I will show you the logo there. So Zesray Studio. You can check them out on Facebook and Instagram. Uh, just here's a look while we're back here at the back of the package and uh, you can see uh, some really cool uh, product shots there. Got a sunset going on in the background and then uh, he's got his uh, Roman eagle there flying on the post. So that's pretty cool. Uh, the reason I picked these up, well actually my the reason I was going to pick them up and then um, my buddy Bilal uh, actually bought them for me for my birthday so uh, he shot me a PayPal over and was like hey go pick them up so I was able to get the entire set uh, plus one extra guard and then the three gladiators that come in this is the second wave if you are not familiar with these figures there was an, an additional wave that came out first and I think it just featured three gladiators, if I'm not mistaken. And then this line has three gladiators plus these three Roman soldiers. So uh, awesome figures, fantastic detail. And even from that first wave to this one, they've really uh, stepped up a notch. I don't have any of the wave one figures presently. I've got one on pre-order from Big Bad Toy Store that still has not got their shipment from the first release a year ago. So still waiting for that to come in. But um, so I'll just have to kind of compare it to Marvel Legends and Mythic Legions and some other stuff But uh, when we do the comparisons. But these are just fantastic figures. And man, if you can pick these up, you need to. I got mine through Empire Toy Shop. And uh, you should check them out on Instagram. And if you uh, can't find any there, if they're sold out, I'm not sure, I haven't looked in the last few days um if they're sold out there they may be for pre-order still at like big bad toy store or dorkside toys or somewhere i'm not sure who all is carrying them online um and if you miss them then you're gonna pay a king's ransom for them on ebay because these hold their value and increase in value almost instantly uh so definitely something you want to grab as quick as possible if you're interested well, that's enough talk. Let's get them open and check them out. They do have a collector-friendly style package. So you can just pull this little uh, lip down here and here, and then slide the card back off. And uh, the tape caught, hold on, sorry. <laughs> the tape on his little staff caught, but anyway. You just slide that out and then you can button it back up and store it if you want to. And uh, everything is nice and neat and in place. Just got a clamshell in there. I just realized we forgot to look at the side. So if you'd like to pause that and read the bio, uh, you can do that there. And then on the other side, we just get another uh, product shot. So the first accessory we get is this uh, piece or this staff that's in two pieces. So you just uh, plug that, you can see the notches and how they line up. So you just plug that down in there. And uh, it fits in there nice and snug. And then you've got that in one nice piece. And the detail on this thing is fantastic. Strength and honor. Very cool. Very, very comparable. Um, in design, I would say, to the Mythic Legions line. Uh, we'll get a look at the articulation and kind of see how that compares, but fantastic detail, front and back. Really well done there. 
All right, so we've had a look at his uh, iron, the eagle uh, staff banner thing. I'm drawing a blank. Sorry, I've been at work a long time today, and I can't word good anymore. We get this beautiful, uh, almost suede feeling cloak, which is very nice. And you can see the stitching here, how it's stitched. And uh, it just drapes over the figure and uh, does really well. And you can uh, manipulate it. You can kind of roll it back. Kick it off to one side. Kind of do whatever you want to. It's not wired or anything, but it hangs very nice. And looks really good. So that's the cloak. We also get this beautiful helmet here. And uh, I love the design on this helmet. The wash on the... Uh, I think that I don't know if that's horsehair or feathers. I, I'm not. I can't remember what they used for that. Um, but this a nice soft plastic, so it has a little bit of give to it and flex, so it can fit over his head just fine with no problems. But the engraving and all the detail on this is just exquisite. Very very well done. It's a black. Um, maybe a even like a espresso brown even not a true black it's a very very dark brown or black hard to tell in my current lighting i'll have to get it in the sun to know for sure but uh and then gold accents everywhere and i mean it just looks fantastic really really nice and it just fits over his head no problem. So you just pull it on and off with ease. And it looks great. We also get an alternate head, which is very nice and uh, is very Destro. So this is the uh, Iron Grenadiers, Grenadiers, however you say that, <laughs> version Destro. It is a half mask. So you can see his hair there on the back. And the wash on it is really nice as well. Um, they did actually wear those. We do get uh, these alternate hands. And they're not soft like the Storm Collectibles. It's a little bit harder of a plastic. But it does have a slight flex to it. If you put some heat on it, it'll become a lot more pliable. But um, a little bit stiffer than a Storm Collectibles but very similar in, de in the design and look of it. But you get a left and right relaxed hand, you get the weapon holding hands on the figure, and then you uh, get the fists. So three different uh, hand setups, and the sculpt on these is very nice. And uh, they just pop on and off to a, a ball hinge, so. The thumbnail detail there is really good if you can see it if I can get it to focus sculpt on these is fantastic throughout uh, we also get a dagger which is really nice and it uh, goes into one of the sheaths on his belt or scabbards it's just a gold and silver uh, two-tone paint job on that but it looks really good and then we have uh, my favorite, <laughs> the gladius and the, the uh, scabbard or sheath that it goes in. So that looks fantastic. Look at that. Sculpt on this thing is awesome. I got a little trash on the blade there, but very nice, very shiny paint job on that and the detail on this is really really good looks very authentic just really really nice uh, you got the handle there looks fantastic you got the embellishments on the pommel and on the handguard I mean just a beautiful beautiful piece here
fantastic. There's a little wash on there and it just looks really good. Really, really nice. So you can just move the arm back and uh, put the dagger down inside that sheath or scabbard and then there's a pinhole here and a little peg here that you can mount the sword to the belt with and uh, Sorry for all the explosions in the background. If you can hear them, it's 4th of July and people are blowing off fireworks right now. But yeah, so you can see how that goes on there. And you can take it on and off as you desire. So uh, uh, definitely take a hair dryer and heat the joints before you try to force them. His arms were stuck like stiff as a board whenever I got him open. So I just put some heat on them and now they're moving fine. Um, there was some trash, maybe probably some paint and wash and whatever they had done to weather the figure up inside there. And uh, I just, as I started rocking it back and forth, it started coming out and I just kind of brushed it away and now it moves nice and fluidly. So, uh, yeah, being a specialty figure that's often required. Looking at the uh, face sculpt here, I mean, look at that. That is brilliant. That looks like a real face. That is just absolutely fantastic. Very nice shading. The hair is a really nice uh, wash on it to bring out the texture, and it just looks fantastic. And, uh,. The armor looks amazing. You've got all this uh, leather work and the leather grain on there is just beautiful. You get the uh, faces there on the coin looking, you know, embellishments on the suit. It's, it is a chestnut dark, or not chestnut, a dark, dark espresso brown, not a true black. Um, and then a blue uh, undergarment. So the tunic and everything is blue underneath and then you have the uh, brown and then you have a lighter brown here looking down here at the uh, leg guards here you've got the wolves on there that look really cool and you got these uh, the scroll work here of the kind of a leaf pattern looks awesome you got your traditional Roman footwear looks really good uh, peg holes on the bottom of the feet so that's cool uh, all the golds and uh, silvers on these guys are really really nice and brilliant paintwork is just phenomenal really really love these guys there's I could just go on and on about how good they look but you can see for yourself I mean they're just awesome the uh, wolf on the chest looks really nice Everything just looks so good. Now, in terms of articulation, uh, the head is on a ball peg and it has a, uh, like a double dumbbell peg. So you can get it to uh, tilt to the side and get him to look up pretty well. You can get him to look down decently. Uh, you know, kind of any way you want to turn it, it works just fine. The arms hinge out to here, and these pieces do float. They're attached in the back, so they'll kind of move out of your way as you move them around. And uh, then you get a single jointed elbow with a swivel. It basically just gets you 90 degrees, but that's fine. Uh, the hands are on a hinge system so they can rotate around 360 that way and uh, you can have them rock up and down for your sword fighting uh, poses or um, you can uh, hold on I lost it <laughs> there we go 
or you can get them, you know, to turn in and out if you want to. Uh, so just fantastic. You can get them to move around any way you want them to. The torso is on a ball peg as well, and it just kind of rocks around very, very subtly. You can get some left to right, not just a tremendous amount. The armor is definitely uh, limits the articulation. You're not going to get a serious like ab crunch or anything out of this guy. Um, but the uh, articulation in other places is, uh, certainly makes up for it and is nice. Uh, again, with his skirt, you can only split out to there. Uh, you could get a full split otherwise, but all this heavy armor and everything is preventing that, which is probably true to life, honestly. Uh, so we get a double jointed knee bend to there. Our toes do point up and down nicely and we do get a sick uh, ankle rocker or ankle pivot I'm sorry so we do get a nice pivot and we get a nice ankle rocker so good articulation there uh, there's no boot cut and you do just get kind of a slight in and out nothing just extraordinary uh, in terms of a leg swivel there For some size comparisons, here he is next to a Mythic Legions Templar Knight and a uh, Lord of the Rings by Toy Biz uh, Orakai. And uh, you can see he edges them out in height just slightly, that, but they're very close in uh, design and style and height to one another. Here he is next to a Marvel Legends Hugh Jackman movie Wolverine and a Marvel Legends movie Venom. So these are technically six inch scale figures. This is more of a seven inch scale figure. So Venom doesn't tower over him quite like you should. And here he is next to figures more in his scale, which is the Masters of the Universe Classics He-Man. And then you have the uh, WWE wrestling figure line. This is a custom General, or not General Maximus, but a custom Gladiator Maximus figure that I made uh, several years ago uh, from one of the WWE like Gladiator mix and match wrestling kits. You could pop off the arms and legs and do all kind of stuff. And I just painted these black. I made my own little leather skirt for him to have around, kind of trying to replicate this. And then um, this was already just a solid black top, like the one he wears in the film. And then these were gold, and I painted them silver, I think. Or these may have been silver. I think I painted some gold for a different custom I did. That's right. And then the uh, tunic underneath, his is blue in the film, and... Um, this came in like a burgundy red color, so I just painted it blue. But uh, anyway, so you can see he's very much in line with your other seven inch figure lines like Masters of the Universe Classics and the uh, wrestling figures. And just because I want to and can, I'm gonna show him off against the custom She-Hulk figure that was just made for me <laughs> by, uh, an awesome customizer that lives in the Philippines. You can find uh, her information on my post of this figure on my Instagram. And uh, I've got her tagged in there. And if you'd like one made for you, she does fantastic work. Highly recommend her. She is awesome. Her name's Nalia Christine Sanchez, I believe. And um, she has her own little custom shop where she does custom figures, so definitely check it out. Now, for the uh, regular soldiers, the regular uh, Praetorian Guards, nicknamed Jackals, the uh, bio is here. If you want to pause that and read it. Same style package and everything. Nothing's really different uh, in terms of the articulation of the figure, the look of the figure, excepting, of course, the different style shoulder armor, which I really like this style of kind of graduated armor. I think that's really cool. I get the same little blurb for the line on the side as the other. 
You get the figure in the package there. He does come with different accessories. You get a sword and a shield. His sword has like fallen down in there. It's bouncing around inside there somewhere. There it is. Ta-da! We'll get out in a second and uh, get a cool product shot there on the side of the figure. And they have a silver face mask instead of the gold. And they do not have an alternate head like the other figure does. Now, the uh, only real differences are you still get all the same interchangeable hands. You get the same basic uh, figure set up, just differing shoulder pads on these guys versus the Praetorian uh, Prefect. And uh, you, you don't get the double belt. You get a single belt for the scabbard and the sword. And you get um, this big, awesome shield, which is fantastic. And then you get the uh, helmets don't have the big pompadour <laughs> on top. Uh, it's the same, you know, or at least it's a very similar helmet design. Uh, it still has the wolf insignia and scroll work and everything on there. It just doesn't have the big uh, mane on the top like the prefect does. So the regular guards helmets are without it. And they do slip on and off in the same way. So, very cool. Love these figures, recommend them 10 out of 10. Definitely pick as many up as you can if you're into this, like I am. The spear uh, also is different. So you don't have the Roman Eagle. Sorry, I forgot to mention this. You don't have the Roman Eagle spear thing going on with these guys they just have a basic uh spear that comes in two pieces so you take and uh just stab this down in there but it's too tall to fit in the package so they have removed it but it has a lot of really nice detail on it as well those are the only differences. So if you just want a bunch of these guys and don't want to get the the Praetorian Prefect and just want the Praetorian Guard, uh, they're certainly just as cool. Well, anyway, uh, please uh, comment, like, share, subscribe, check me out on Instagram, and uh, would love to hear what you guys think about these figures, if you plan on picking them up, and uh, yeah. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Oh, and one last thing that I forgot to mention. The uh, greaves on the arms and the legs do come off. If you want to heat them up really good, pop the feet and the hands off, you can take those off. I don't know why you'd want to, but it's an option.